Matthew 7 and 21. Uh -huh. says, not everyone that saith unto me, saith to me. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, right? Lord. Uh huh. Shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Yeah, in other words, you, you can fake your front like you're a party. You know how some people act like they're friends with people and stuff like that? Just perpetrate, right? Yes. You know what I mean? He said, you can come up and talk about you, Lord, Lord, like 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 you, you my brother, you my sister, you my family, right? Mm -hmm. He's like, what did he say, though? But he said, do the will of my father, which is in heaven. But he that does the will of my father, which is in heaven. Now, here, right here. And all through the scriptures, Jesus is saying, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. He just said right there, but the one that do the will of the Father. So the Father put Jesus there, and we going around. We just trying to put Jesus on the same level as us, or the same level as a prophet. How dare us? Jesus was way more than the prophet. That's what the Muslims said. He was just a prophet. Just a prophet? Well, what, what caused him to go hang on the cross, and what caused him to rise again? Why the other prophets didn't do it? Why didn't, why didn't God say in Philippians 2, I've given Muhammad, I've given Selassie I, I've given Clarence 13, I've given Malcolm, I've given Martin, I've given uh, Farrakhan, a, a name that's above every name. He didn't. He said, I've given that name to Jesus, that has the name of what? Jesus. Every what? Oh, that goes back to uh, that Revelation 7 and 9 again. Because folks think you can take that scripture that's saying, or that scripture that says that he has other sheep. He said, every knee will bow and say that, and confess that Jesus is what? Not my, y'all get me? I just tied it in for y'all. Jesus is what? Jesus is what? Jesus is Lord, y'all. You all? Jesus is Lord. None of them, I mean, I mean, I know you go back in time and watch movies and say, my Lord, right? To people that were high potentate, right? But Jesus is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You got it? So we are praying to him. We're going to keep on talking to him. Well, I want you all to do like Luke chapter 18. Look at that woman that went to the unjust judge. But the difference is y'all going to the just judge. Right? And I want y'all to keep on asking him to avenge you of your adversary, to clean you up, give creating you a clean heart, receive the Holy Spirit. And I don't care if you don't get it today. I care. If you understand what I'm saying? What that means is I want you to keep seeking if you don't get it today. I want you to seek it. I want you to put it on your mind while you're driving. If you like shopping, I want it to be in your psyche. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I want you to put it in your heart, in your mind, like I said. Like whatever you ever chose in your life that you wanted, that you sought for. I want you to seek the Lord like that. Seek him. Ask him. Knock. Do like Luke 18. Don't stop. I want you to worry the Lord about. What did I say I want you to do? Worry him. You can't worry him. That's how he wants you to be. He wants you to worry him. If you look at Luke 18, that's what he said. This woman kept on coming to this unjust man because she knew that he had the power to help her. Come on, say praise the Lord. But he would not help her because he was arrogant. He was pride. We can't say that about the Lord. We talk about a man. Is that right? But she knew he had the power to help her. Yes. So she didn't know nowhere else to turn. Yes. So she kept on coming to him because yes. he had what she wanted. Come on, say, but Lord. Now, what I'm trying to tell you all tonight and what I'm trying to tell you right now is God has what you want. He has what you need. Now, do you want it? That's the thing. He has what you need, but do you want it? And if you want it bad enough, you got to keep on knocking. You got to keep on asking. You got to keep on seeking. Hallelujah. And even if it seems like he sent you away, you got to come back. Hallelujah. I don't care if you come back in the next five minutes, but come on back. I don't care if you come back in an hour, but come on back. Come on in the name of Jesus. I don't care if you come back every day of the week, but come until you get what God has for you. Come on, say God promised.
silence, child. Hallelujah. Look at Acts chapter 2, verse 33. It said, His promise. Come on. Look at Acts 32, 38. It said, For His promise unto you. Come on. And to your children. If you want it, you can get it. Hallelujah. Don't let the devil, how about say, the devil is a liar. He comes to rob. He comes to kill. And he comes to destroy. And he'll give you another spirit and make you feel comfortable. You don't need the Holy Spirit. Because he knows Romans 8 9. If you have not the Spirit of God, you are none of his. Now let me walk you like this. You know what an undercover cop can dress and look just like any one of us, male or female, right? You don't know that they're a cop, but they know that they're a cop. Is that right? The police department know that they're a cop. Is that right? Because they've been initiated into the police force. Some of them say, praise the Lord. What you got to do is got to get initiated as a child of God. So what am I saying? You might look like other women. The men might look like other men. But when you come to God, that's just undercover. That's just flesh. Hallelujah. But when you've been initiated into the family of God, you are part of the organization. Come on, say, praise the Lord. That's just like when you go to somebody's church. And the, uh, and the pastor said, we're opening up the doors of the church. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going to give you the right hand of fellowship next week. Or if you've already been baptized, yeah. we're going to give you the right hand of fellowship right now. Uh, you give the preacher your hand. Come on, say, yeah. Lord. But you give God your heart. Uh, let the deacons and the trustees gather around. Uh, let the secretary stand up. Uh, yeah. Write sister, brother, so-and-so name down on the road. Is that right? Uh -huh. And they ask you as a candidate, uh, have you been baptized? Come on, say, Lord. Yeah. If you say, no, you can't receive the right hand of fellowship right now. But we'll make a point in time where we will baptize you. Come on, say praise the Lord. But if you have been baptized already, amen, you can come by letter, you can come by Christian experience, or you can come by water baptism. Come on, say praise the Lord. And if you've been, if you fulfill one of them, amen, we'll give you the right hand and welcome you into the house of God. Come on, that's the on the earth. But in the heavens, you need the spirit of the Lord. Oh, yeah. Now, when you join that church, come on, say, wait a lot. The members know, the pastor know, that you're just not sitting here. You are a member. Hallelujah. And because you're a member, they will tell you you have certain obligations. Come on, say amen. Sometimes they might send you to a member's class, a new member's class. Come on. And want you to participate after you're no longer a new member and make you part of the Sunday school, the Bible study, whatever. Whatever auxiliary. They say, whatever you find your hand to do, they want you to do it. Come on, say, wait a lot. But they know you are a member, so they want you to be active. Yeah. Come on, say praise the Lord. Well, so it is with God. God wants you to be initiated so you can be active. He wants you to come by letter. The letter of the gospel. Jesus is the word. He wants you to come by water baptism. I've been dipped in the water. I died spiritually, but I've been resurrected. I believe in Jesus. Come on, say it. Uh, come by letter. Come by Christian experience. In other words, I've been walking for you, God. I repented of my sin. I'm coming to you. Thou art the God that I believe in. And I believe that you sent Jesus as my Savior. Come on and say praise the Lord. And because you sent Jesus as my Savior, I heard Jesus say, you must be born again. What was he talking about? He said you got to be filled with the Spirit. Because that which is flesh is flesh. But that which is spirit is spirit. Can I get a witness? So I need to ask you, God, I'm already a fleshly man. I'm already a fleshly woman. How can I get in the spirit? Create in me a clean heart. Renew God, the right spirit in me. Purge me. Wash me. Oh God, and I shall be clean. Make me what I'm supposed to be. I don't want to be conformed to the world, but I want to be trained by the renewing of my mind in the name of Jesus. Help me, Lord. I need your help. I need you. 
to stand by me. I need you to clean me up. I need you to turn me around. All these demons at me, they're coming at me. They won't let me go. But in the name of Jesus, God, get the devil out of my way. Cast the devil out. Hallelujah. Help me see my way clear. I'm seeking God. I'm sinking, but thou able to lift me up. I'm down, but thou able to lift me up. Hallelujah, God. All of the ground is sinking sand. But you told me to stand on the rock. But I can't do it without you. Help me, God. In the name of Jesus, I call on that name. I bow down before you, God. Saying, please have mercy on me. In the name of Jesus. Come on, say praise the Lord. Created me a clean heart. Hallelujah. Whatever it takes, God, bring it out of me. Deliver me. In the name of Jesus. Oh, my God. Help me. Deliver me. You're not here, amen, to act. But we're inspired. We want to inspire you. Come on, say praise the Lord. And this is what we want you to be inspired Every second of your life, Lord, fill me. Yeah. I've been filled, and I still got to be driving and walking and talking to the Lord. Lord, amen, bind the devil. Yeah. Devil's all around. all around. And the devil will come at you. You, you think you got something you like, the devil will attack that. You think you got somebody you like, the devil will attack that. Yeah. You think you got things you like, the devil will attack that. Mm-hmm. But nothing shall separate me, hallelujah, from the love of God. Can you imagine Job, the devil tacked everything he had to try to get him to turn back? I believe what he was saying was, Lord created me a clean heart. I don't know what's going on. You're not always going to know what's going on. I'm not always going to know what's going on. But no, it's a battle going on. The devil don't like you. He don't like us. And you ain't even been filled yet. So he don't want you to get there. He want to stop you. Do you understand what I'm saying? From getting to your destination. What did I say? Amen. He wants to stop you. But you, the Bible says, greater is he that's in you. And he got into your heart. You might have more manifestation to do, more planting, but this is why I plant all the seed of God in you that you can. Because you can make it. The race is not given to the swift nor the strong, but to the one that endures to the end. Ladies, don't give up. Don't give up, ladies. Don't give up. I'm not going to give up. You might get wounded, but don't give up. You might have to cry sometimes, and you will, and have. You ain't gave up yet. Don't you give up now. Huh? He wipes away the tears from your eyes, don't he? Praise the Lord. He takes the pain away, don't he? He takes the gloom away, don't he? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Huh? You just, it might be hard sometimes, but after a while you say, Lord, all right. If I throw up my hands and I give up where I'm going, who else I'm going to call on? You brought me this far. Then you recognize what a love is. Love love takes you through. Hallelujah. Anybody can say they love you, but love takes you through. And love don't just walk out on you. And God said, I would never leave you. That's what God said. You can leave him. Oh, but he didn't leave God. He said he married. I think Jeremiah 3. I'm married to the backslider. New Testament says he have 100 sheep and one get lost. He leave the 99 and go after the one. But you can leave God. The prodigal son, his father didn't leave him. He left his father. And that's the example that we do. We leave God. God didn't leave us. He said, I will never. Jesus said, I'll never leave you. Never. He ain't no liar. He said, I won't leave you. But you can leave him. But after you leave them like the prodigal son, the prodigal daughter, after you go out and hang out with the pigs, where you going? And you will get down with the pigs. Because folks will use you for everything you got. Take everything you got. And that's the kind of world we live in. Dogs. They never, a dog never get full. Is that right? I don't care how little the dog is. It can be your best money. But a dog will eat all day. Is that right? You don't have to be a big dog. That mug. You can wash that mug. That mug will go right in the garbage. Is that right? Drink out the toilet. Do anything. Praise the Lord. Anything they can do, they do. Because that's their nature. 
And we might be attached to it, but they're not human, right? So imagine us when we get delivered. We get delivered. We start being hungry for the things of God. He that hungers and she that hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. You keep seeking after the Lord. The Lord's going to give you what you want. You got to stay with the Lord, though, but you got to really want it. You got to really want it. And you got to be willing to, to change. Sometimes, you know, like a sculptor, he's the potter, right? And the sculptor, and the potter does what? Mold. Right? You are, we are molding. Lord, mold me. Create in me. A clean heart. Remold my heart. Take away that with that which has hurt me. I'm going here, but now I'm we'll going to go here. You know what I mean? The things that's in here that's hindering me. Take it out. I formed this rock in Matthew 6 and 8. I built my church. I, I put this here. I, I said, our head is like a rock, right? So, so the Jesus said, upon this rock, of course, the name Peter meant rock, right? But I came up with a good analogy, so we can't miss it. Lord, uh, in this rock, get it in my rock. You understand what I'm saying? Because a lot of times that's what's hindering us, our rock, our hard head. You understand what I'm saying? But if God penetrates through that rock and clean our heart out, clean what's been hurting us, clean us what's been hindering us, man, we'll be beautiful men and women. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Some of us feel like we're all right. We're like, I'm not too bad right now. That's how we feel, right? So now, can you imagine if the Lord really get up in there? Or if he in there already and get up in there some more? It's so much to God. So much. God is not confined in a no little area. God is a big God. And the love and the blessings and the grace of God is so humongous. So we really wouldn't you want to be emanating with the love of God. Oh my God. To the point that when you walk in, people could just feel the love. Hallelujah. You know, if people say, oh, you just angry. Da, 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 da. Well, I'm going to keep on seeking the Lord. Then that's only a reason for me to seek the Lord some more. Come on, say the word. Oh, you, 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 when you preach, you're angry. Hallelujah. I don't think the Lord is happy about a whole lot of things, but the joy of the Lord is my strength. If you be strong, God, you make God happy. Be strong. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. So the Lord, make, we want to put a smile on the Lord's face. And you know what makes the Lord smile? When we go along, as we got about, Lord, I bow before you. Behold the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. That takes away the sin of the world. Jesus. 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 We got to cry out like the blind man. Jesus. Because even if you can see, we are blind without Jesus. We might see naturally, but we can't see still. Jesus. What in the world? I want to see. I want to be healed. I want to be delivered. I want to walk. Because even though we walk with our legs, we're lame. I want to hear. But even though we think we hear, we can't hear right. I want to hear. Y'all hear what I'm saying. Lord, I want to be healed. Get every demon that I will shy away from me. Hallelujah. Create in me a clean heart. Hallelujah. Y'all all right? Praise the Lord. Create in me a clean heart. And renew the right spirit in me. Hallelujah. Yes. I just want to want to praise him. I just want to feel him. Hallelujah. In the time of trouble, I want him to hide me. Amen. It says, they that love the Lord, amen, uh, something about you should abide. I can't get it right now, but he that dwelleth in the secret place, uh, he that abides or whatever, whatever. But you can abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I hear him singing a song, the devil can't, I don't know what the devil can hear, what I don't care. All I just want the Lord to protect us. Come on, say praise the Lord. That's what I want. I want the Lord to protect us. I want the Lord to be with us. Is that all right? I want the Lord to be with us. I want the Lord to help us. I want the Lord to be right there. And he is. We got to grab hold by faith. Some people talking about the faith. They taking the Bible and tell us, oh, you ain't about, y'all want, and some people trying to take the word of Jesus and tell us that Jesus is not a white. They say what color we were. In fact, if you really get into Revelation when it talks about Jesus, you really want to be honest. What are you talking about Jesus? Said, he said, God sent a message to Jesus and Jesus sent it to his angel to send it to John. So the description of the wool and the eyes really was a messenger. It wasn't Jesus. Uh, look at it. You understand what I'm saying? We argue, and sometimes I use the two on them, saying, oh, Jesus was, had white hair. But if you look at the scripture, it says, God sent his message to his son. Son gave the message to his messenger, and the messenger gave it to John. 
And when John saw the messenger, he described the messenger. He didn't just, now, it, now, maybe he was Jesus, looked like Jesus, maybe he didn't. But it said he was the messenger. Y'all got me? And that's in the first verse of Revelation. As we go, you understand what I'm saying? But because people try to fight us so much, we get them. No, but Jesus ain't white. I don't care what color Jesus is. I just want to get there. And John 4 and 24 said, God is what? Spirit. Well, what color is Jesus now if he's in heaven? Praise the Lord. You understand what I'm saying? I don't know what color. Maybe he was Hebrew or Israelite. Maybe because we flew to Jesus and went to Egypt. Now, I don't know. Somebody said, how can he be white if he walked uh, the deserts and walked the, on, the, on the earth and was in Egypt? So I don't care what color he was. He didn't do nothing wrong. That's all I know. He never hated nobody. He just loved everybody. He even turned around and told us to love our enemies. Is that right? Yeah. What did Jesus do that's wrong? Who care what color he is? So if white man did wrong, we can't blame it on Jesus. If the black man do wrong, we can't blame it on Jesus. If the Arabs do wrong, we can't blame it on Jesus. Jesus didn't do nobody no harm. Nobody. He wrote, I say he's roping everybody. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. On that note, Lord, creating us a clean heart. Because I want everything that God has for me. And I, I don't want to go to hell. And I know you don't either. No, too many people don't want to mention hell no more. We better mention it because as the clock ticks, guess what? We're getting closer to eternity. I don't want to go to hell. And I would dare not, to, if anything I can tell you to do to keep you from hell, that's my job. Now, what I want? I want to go to heaven and I don't want you to go? You got to even write the spirit. You got a selfish, low-down spirit. You want to go to heaven, but you don't want nobody else to go? I want everybody that I can get to go. Because bottom line is, I don't care if they're the wicked person. God clean enough, there ain't going to be no more wickedness. So what you say? You so wicked, I want you to go to hell. No, God, clean them up. Clean her up. Because hell is eternal. Y'all got me? That's eternal. You go, I'm not going to go in here and put my hand in no ball and water. Can, but can you imagine that? Yeah. Huh? I'm not going to get in and go and open up the stove and try to let my arm hit that um, um, hot rail. Can you imagine that? And when you get burned, it's fading. Almost a lifetime. You know, you burn, burn and swell up, right? You end up putting the wrong stuff on it, trying to get that pain away, and then you're all bruised, and it's still hurting another month. And the mark is still there years later. Is that right? I don't want to be burned. I don't want nobody to burn. Praise the Lord. I want us to be saved. Lord, creating us a clean heart. Praise the Lord. Y'all all right? Amen. And we love the Lord. We thank God for all that he is to us. And we just want to... Amen. We want to make it in the name of the Lord. We want to make it.